Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel, Robin McClendon, and I'm here in my studio, mixed media artist, gel printer, book artist, um, painter, you know, mixed media for the most part. It's good seeing, the, uh, being back with those of you who were chatting it up right now from Premiere and everyone else. It's just nice to hang out with you here on YouTube. So today, what I thought we would do, as promised, last week when we were pulling these prints i work with these very large um pieces of um, these large papers and you know creating um collages and what have you with the prints i finish them off different ways but these i would finish off like this one i definitely finish off collaging um this one i would do collage but i may actually do like some of my asian text some vintage paper some vintage um ephemera on there just to kind of play off the brush printing uh let's see so i would do different things you know um this one i might go back and actually do some of my graffiti scripting on it maybe not collage so i do different things but today i'm going to work on this one because i will collage on this one so let's move these out of the way if you haven't seen um this video then for those of you who may have missed last week's, just go back to last week's and check that video out where we were making a lot of these mark making papers. We did a we did some a few weeks ago and then we did some again last week. And at the end of that, I thought, you know, like it'll be nice to show you how I use these and um as collage papers in a finished art piece. So we're gonna we're gonna use matte medium. But before we get to that, one of the things I want to talk about is you know, when you pull on a gel plate, and I did this on the large one. This is, I think, the 16 by 20 is the size. And, um, you know, you kind of get these uneven borders. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead because I don't, um, I work the whole plate and I'm not using any type of registration tool. You can, I have a tendency to sort of like full bleed prints. Uh, I, I guess it's the painter in me, not so much the printmaker. And so I like things that kind of go to the end of the canvas or off the edge. And even my cradle boards, like I may actually put this on a cradle board or I might actually put it on a wood, a hardboard surface, something thin that then could be framed um, with no glass or anything in front of it is generally what I like to do. So with that said, I want everything to go to the end. If I want a border, then I'll come back and actually put a mat down. I'll mat this piece if I wanted that. So, you know, it's, you know, everyone does something a little different. It really just has to do with your preferences. So before I start collaging, I like to determine the edges of my print because then that helps me to determine um, exactly where my collage pieces are gonna go because some of them, I want them to work off the edge, et cetera. So I'm using this, this ruler, you know, that you use for fabric and stuff like that, because I can see through it. I can see to my, it's pretty long, first of all, which is a lot, but I like, and I can see through to my edge. So it allows me to go ahead and sort of tear and get everything nice and even, you know. So that's pretty much taking it up to the edge for me. And uh, I could take a little bit more off if I wanted to, but I think that's good. I like um, that portion. So let's go ahead and do some on this side. So you're gonna see, I'm gonna lose a little bit of the line here because I do want it to be pretty even and I'm okay with that. So I'm just gonna kind of bring it into a to a good place. And because I have my ruler here, I can really line this up nicely. Let's go ahead and take this. Now I printed this on the glassine, you may remember. I find the glassine glues down beautifully onto um, cradle board, onto um, a heavier, um, weight paper, like a printmaking paper, uh, you know, so you can really get this, get a really good, um, adhere, you know, adherence of this paper 
to other substrates. Okay, so that's good. So I like that size. I wanted to kind of talk you through why I cut it down. And that's a personal, that's a personal preference. There's no right or no wrong to that. It's just, you know, it's like anything in art. It's just what you like to want. And the most innovative artists are the ones who break the rules. So keep that in mind. <laughs> um, so I, I like what we're doing here. So I'm kind of just deciding my bearings. I feel like I'm going to, I feel like this is going to be the top. This is going to be the bottom. Okay. Let me go back to, these are some of the papers, you know, that we created. I think I'm going to stick with the black and whites for this piece, sort of monochromatic. So I'm going to pull some of those pieces out just because I had those other colors on there already. And I don't want to, I kind of like just want those to sing, but I could come back with some, some of this if I wanted to add more. But I believe that what I'm going to do is stick to a monochromatic palette. Just kind of, you know, auditioning a few things. One of those circles could work. This pink is nice too, but I like I said, I think I'm gonna stick with, I like to sort of start, have a starting place. If I decide that I wanna add more, then at that point I can come back and, you know, pull some additional pieces. So now I'm gonna get my um, metal edged ruler. And I think what I'm going to do is start off just, I am going to actually use very fine watercolor brush and water. This um, Japanese paper is long fiber and it actually tears better if you can put a little water down because you want to get that that sort of feathered edge there um, and also it just doesn't tear very easily with the ruler when it's not wet you'll find that it'll tear or rip kind of funny so it's always a good idea to use a little bit of water and And I like when those long fibers hang off. Okay, so one of the things that I like to do is um, just begin to pull some of the pieces um, out that I feel like I want to use in the work. And, uh, and then I'll decide once I get going but it, it gives me a place to start laying things out and just seeing how I like. The collage elements. Okay. Let's see that possibly there. Now, I don't like this straight edge because that's the, the natural edge of the paper. So I'm going to get rid of that by once again, getting some water there and then just pull it. It tears easily enough. Okay, good job. So that may actually line up at the top there. You can see how the elements will start playing out. And um, let me just go ahead. This one tore at one point. So I'm just going to kind of finish that piece and kind of figure out where I may want to place that. 
Like, see, that could actually be really nice right there. So the mark making can sort of work its way into. So let's just go ahead and draw our water line. There. And down the side here. I'm working right on top of this because this glass seam doesn't absorb the water. But if you're if you're using another paper that may be um, a little more sensitive, like a printmaking paper, then you may want to just work on even um, a. Uh, I'm thinking. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm thinking about like a silicone mat or even your um, wax paper or something that's, you know, water absorbent kind of surface. So I, I like to also, when I have these shapes like this, sort of cut out the shape. I feel like it makes a better collage element than to have, you know, all this extra there. We don't need that. So I like what's happening there at the top. You see how we're starting to get line integrated into places where it didn't naturally happen with the gel plate. So once again, I like this down there. So I need to here get this straight edge off. I like to keep some of the straight edges. So right here, because right now I'm thinking that this piece is going to, um, you know, butt up right with the edge of the paper. So to have that natural edge here is nice. Um, I feel like I want another one of these elements. Just to kind of bring the eye around. Like, I feel like this is a very strong element, even though it's really blending in nicely to the marks on either side. And then this is coming in nicely. So I feel like another element that sort of mirrors this down here somewhere. So let's go for this one right here. The other thing that's nice is that, remember that when we go to um, glue this down, I'm gonna use matte medium. So things are gonna get pretty wet, which is what we want, because that's gonna cause things to go more translucent. So yeah, I like that there. And then this sort of adds this element close by. So it's not, I don't feel like things are just hanging out in space. I, the way I like to collage, some of my um, philosophies are, I don't really do the random, like one here, one there, one there. I mean, it's not my personal aesthetic, especially when I'm putting things down onto my page. I like I like my collage elements to seem more integrated into the original print. Um, not to say there's anything wrong with that, of course. I'm just giving you my intake on uh, insight on like why I'm placing things different places or even thinking about the way I'm placing them. Like I feel like this right here is going to take me off a little but that might be this one might be kind of nice right there let's let's take it off and, and see so we'll get this and get this and then we'll see also it's it's five items <laughs> i'm i'm kind of an odd even you know girl so i like odds when i'm um putting elements and since these are collage elements, in some ways, you know, one could say, well, you're not going to really see them because they'll integrate. But, you know, when the print is done, you do see these, these additional pieces. And um, in an odd way, your mind is always counting, you know, um, even, you know, sort of the subconscious mind is always counting and figuring and, the, you know, what oftentimes makes something work or not is the way your your mind will look at it. And it'll you'll either feel it's right, 
or you'll feel like, ah, oh, it's not right, you know? And a lot of times that has to do with things maybe not quite being balanced or feeling out of balance. And interestingly enough, sometimes the number of items you have can contribute to that. So I like the way, um, sort of in the camera, it feels like it's disappearing a little bit, but you know, looking with the natural eye, I can really see that element. And it's sort of like, get this circle here and this sort of egg shape there, but there's a lot of blue around it. So it's kind of like, it's kind of integrating the blue um, into the piece. I could have picked any color. I could have picked the quinacridone if I wanted to be a little more bold. I could put green. But in my eye, I saw the blue being sort of harmonious. And so it's like bringing this little bit of blue right here is bringing this whole blue grid that got picked up um, from the leftover that was on the gel plate. So I feel like I like this. And so let me get my matte medium together and I'll be back and we can start gluing it down and see how it comes together. Alrighty, so I've got my matte medium. I'm using the matte medium. I, I like that because I don't want things to get shiny. Um, it's your choice what you may like to use, but that's why I'm, I'm doing the matte medium. Um, and I, I start off by, of course, getting a nice layer down. And because I, I want to get a good amount down here because I really want when I lay that piece down to it to absorb the moisture. So I want it to disappear nicely. So let's go ahead and get that down. I'm sitting down. Let me stand up. One point, at one moment, I want to be close to the paper while I'm working, and the other moment, I need to be up. Okay, so now we're just going to take that matte medium and spread it on the top. I like to feather my edges out so that those edges really feather. And what we get is we get what we call in printmaking a chincole. So it really looks like a chincole. I mean, that's done on the plate. It's a whole nother process, but you get this really nice um, feathering and uh, the sense that this was printed on the plate as it went through the, um, the printing press. So let's go ahead and get this up here now. You saw where I just wiped a little bit of the um, the excess off when I put it down. The extra, I just go ahead some time and just go ahead and get some of it off. You also can really press down so that um, you're getting really good coverage on the... Um, of the paper, like it'll really suck down to the, the paper. You know, the rice paper will really suck down to the, just dab it a little bit. If you use the brush, as long as it has enough medium on it, you're good. So you see we're really getting a nice effect. It's starting to really integrate and look as if it's a part of the print, which is one of my fun favorite things to do. Now I like this, I think this should be right about there so that it kind of picks up the line and then this will come in down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this down. Yeah, and so it's just taking our prints to finished art. Alrighty. 
that's that. I'm getting things right off the edge of the page there. That's why in the beginning I wanted to really figure out what my grid was because I really like when I'm um, collaging things, I really want them to integrate into the whole substrate versus um, kind of hanging, just kind of being in the middle and then, you know, I think with prints like this, you need you need your elements to kind of be distributed around. Now this is going to um, curl up a little bit. Let me just put because when I'm done, I'm going to put a piece of waxing or another piece of glassine, waxing wax paper or another piece of glassine over it, and then put it under weight because I want this to dry flat, and it won't dry flat if you. Don't weight it, but you kind of want it to dry a little bit too, because you don't want it to be uber sticky when you go to when you go to lay it out. I think that looks pretty good right there. Kind of get it. I wanted to sort of be in sort of in between this mark there and that line. Okay. This where we want it. All right. Make sure you take your your brush and feather things out, so that your all that nice feathering that we did when we tore it shows up in the finished piece as a uh, is that extra texture. You can really see um, the uh, the color through there. Okay, so let's put this last piece down. I'm I'm still wedded to putting it right about there. So let's just do that. We're going to get color through and uh, texture. Something like that works. nice and see that paper underneath it it's got a little bit yeah. fold it under we don't want that okay so I'll hold this up a little closer so you can see what that elements looking like you see how that paper is just disappearing and we're just getting um, it's really, see how it really just looks like it's, that line is hard to distinguish from the gel. From this line and that line are hard to distinguish. Partly because we did it, it's, we did both of these on the gel plate. So they both look like mono prints. They don't look like, like uh, you might've done it with, you know, drawing with a, um, a pen or a pencil or something, nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying, you know, like the reason why they're integrating nicely is the paper is thin and it's a similar um, type of mark. We both use, we used, you know, mono printing or the jelly plate to, um, to create those lines. And then with this really beautiful thin rice paper, um, it's, it disappears and it just becomes one with the page. So I'm going to let this dry completely come back and show you the finished piece. Now, probably what I would do with this, once it's completely done, like looking at it now, I probably would still come back and do some mark making on it. Like I may actually do some of my scripting on it, or I may come back and do just another bold Sumi mark brush painting like I did on the plate, but I would do it on top of here just to give it another layer, another level to this print. But overall, um, I really like it. And so that sort of shows you how we can begin to use our larger plates. Cause many of you last week, especially, um, said you want to see more of the large plate, more of the large plate. And don't forget with the summit, if you haven't grabbed your ticket yet, run over there and get it at the $87 because the, what I'm going to do, uh, my offering for the summit is going to be working on the large plate and I'm going to do some interesting techniques. So if you've been wanting to do more on the large plate, I will focus in on it on my module. Um, 
as I think about the language of my text, the language of symbols, and how I'm actually telling a story around the my you know my artwork. So yes, I will be back when this is dry. All right, see you in a little bit.